I think it's time to welcome Pablo on the stage for his keynote. Whoa! Hey guys, all right. So yeah, today I just want to give a, a brief talk to, um, to put out an, an idea. Um, so I wanted to talk about open networks and building interoperable businesses. Oh, and by the way, I do sound like a moron, but I'm not a dot eth, eth person. I just had orthodontics put recently, so that's why I'm speaking like this, but I swear, I'm normal. Um, so yeah. I wanted to talk about this, uh, and particularly I wanted to talk about the tension between building things in the right way and building things in the wrong way, uh, which I think is going to be increasingly uh, of utmost importance. So for the longest time, we've had this dichotomy of we can build things optimizing to be censorship resistant or we can optimize things to be, have a sleek UX, be able to monetize a product, which is absolutely fundamental. Um, so you have to either choose, build something like SimpleX, sacrifice the UX, build a product that is kind of barely works, works sometimes, but it's super censorship resistant, or build something like Blue Sky, which, I mean, it's not really censorship resistant, but it has a very slick UX. Users, when they use uh, Blue Sky, they don't know what's going on, but it works in the way they expect it to work. Things work fast, things slow, they don't fail. I mean, obviously, because it's super centralized, so it doesn't really, <laughs> there, there is almost no tension there. Uh, so they sacrifice the entire thing. Um, but I'm here to say that we can build both. We can have both now. So my, whatever I observe is that this tension it's not really um, a tension that is core to building things. It's a tension that exists because of a lack of good enough technology. And I think we, all, we now have the good enough technology. I think eCash is one such technology that enables to explore both of these things within the same product. And I think Noster, which fundamentally are very similar, Noster also allows us to, to build things that are both permissionless and they are awesome and profitable. It's very important to be profitable. No margin, no, no mission. Um, so what happens when you build things in the wrong way? When you start making some trade-offs, you end up with something like this, something like Coinbase. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to Brian Armstrong. I don't know if he deserves it, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He might have said, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give in on this small trade-off. But sometimes trade-offs are a slippery slope. And you end up building something that goes strictly against your values. When you give in enough of those trade-offs, you end up building what you were fighting if we think that Brian Armstrong wanted to bring Bitcoin to the masses, and now he's doing chain analysis, he's working basically for the state, um, you could think that his hero journey brought him to the opposite of where he started. And it all started with making certain trade-offs that he could not uh, go back on. So, I think where we are now is not the dichotomy, the yin-yang we had before. It's more like a quadrant. So I really can't put anything that requires KYC out of the red box of doom because KYC sucks. Like, no matter what you do, you can be fundamentally agree that KYC is important. Just the, the experience itself of KYCing it's horrible, it's horrendous, it's demeaning. Um, so a product that requires KYC can't can ever escape from this red box. And on the other side, we have products like Tor, we have protocols like Tor, like Simplex, like Hypercore, that they, they are decentralized, they are censorship resistant, but they are not quite functional. I mean, anyone that has synced a Bitcoin node 
tour only, doing like IBD, and you want to kill yourself after like two weeks, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I think what's happening in the world, what happened with Samurai, and what's happening just everywhere, and what's happening with, twi with X, with Twitter, uh, means that the world is moving in this direction. You were able to stay on the status quo, on the blue box, in the past, and in the present, kind of. But momentum is taking anything that is here, anything that is not censorship resistant, towards the red box. Things are getting worse. Things will require more and more KYC and more and more overreach. It's just like I've seen, I'm from Argentina, many of you probably know. I, I, I've seen this. When the state is fighting, when the state is kind of dying, it starts to fight and it starts to create all kinds of ridiculous pressure. Uh, in Argentina, for example, the state demanded that they banned foreign books. Why? They said that ink, foreign ink on books was toxic. So they just, like, it's, it's such a stupid thing, but things will get worse because the state is fighting for salvation. Um, so maybe some of you have seen this video of this lady that she wanted to buy groceries and something like that, and she needed to KYC. The KYC required opening her mouth uh, like, this will become the norm. This will continue to work this way. So, if today you make the trade-off of I'm going to build in a way that allows me to position myself in a way that I can capture my users, this is probably in store for your company. The, like, maybe you don't care about the censorship resistant part and all the, 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 those components, and it's fine, but your product will become this. It's very likely that your product will be trending in this direction. So it's important to, um, it, it's important to, to realize that if your product depends on being in the path, if your product has to work, in order to work, if your product, if your business, in order to work, it requires um, holding users' data holding users' funds, this is your future. This is where you're building. And you might not know about You might not realize. You might not want it. But this is what you're building. Now, that's the stick part. On the, on the opposite side, building exclusively on Freedom Tech gives you a bunch of things, really cool things, for free. So many of you might be, especially CISO people, might be familiar with this. This is Pager Duty. It's a service that sends you an alert when your services are down, your backend, your database, whatever it might be, your website is down, your app is not working, you receive this in the middle of the night. Now, if you're building on, on Freedom Tech, if you're building on Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't go down. Like, what, the, what would it even mean for Bitcoin to go down? Nuster doesn't go down. There are many, so many relays. There is so much redundancy distributed organically that you get this. You get all the nine uptime. You get 100% uptime for free. It's absolute insanity. How much money does Twitter spend to have the uptime that they have? How much money does Google spend? Bitcoin has uptime, always, constantly. It's, it's irrational to think about downtime. Now, if your product depends on Nostra, for example, on your relay, your relay goes down, your product goes down. You are not here. What does that mean? It means that if your relay goes down equals your product goes down, it means that you're keeping users' data hostage. You could be and you will be pressured to censor. You, if Alex Jones or wh whoever might be comes and uses your product, and you do have a button to turn them off, you now become a target. And you don't want to be a target. If you build it right, you are not the target. It, it, it's so, so easy. It's, it's just from a personal perspective, it's a better life. Now, building on open networks gives you this for free, network effects to the power of use cases. 
whenever Zach here builds uh, builds a really cool product, Tribal, um, it benefits the products that I work on. When Primal builds a really cool product, a really cool offering, it benefits my product, it benefits my users, it benefits my network. Um, so if you build and lean in, really lean in, into building something that is not trying to capture your users, then you can tap into this. And we've seen within Nostar, we've seen the opposite of this. We've seen Minds.com, for example, where they kind of did a Nostar integration, not really, sort of. It, it, it went absolutely nowhere. So now they are continuing to build their own network effects. They have to do their own sales. They have to build an entire business and just go head to head against Twitter, against Facebook. So it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a really bad idea. It's a, again, it's a bad life. I, it's a life that I don't want for myself because you are competing against the world by yourself. Um, and <laughs> this is a small one, but important. Be, leaning in into building an open networks means that you are, your monetization is KYC free, actual cash monetization. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to just tap into that and not have to reinvent, reinvent Apple Pay, uh, Twitter Pay, uh, Venmo Pay, whatever, whatever it is, pay. Uh, and with regards to, the, um, to building on open protocols, I'm really leaning in. When you need to bootstrap your own network effect, you are isolating yourself. So you are fighting against Twitter, Facebook, Nostr. Whereas if you just build on Nostr and Bitcoin, you are leveraging everybody's work. So very much if you decide to, because I've, I've had this conversation with a few developers that they want to make a small change which essentially forks them off of Bitcoin, forks them off of Nostr, it's a competing protocol. It might be 99% the same, I mean obviously, who's ever been around for a while has seen the, the fork wars and how that ended up panning out, not, not great. Um, so it's not the best protocols that win, it's the protocols that have the right momentum. Um, and you might have to agree that the existing protocols that we have are not ideal. You might want a nine minute block time instead of 10. It's probably not good enough of a, of a reason to just say, well, fuck it, I'm going to run my own, my own Bitcoin. It's going to be very expensive um, to be able to compete, and you'll probably not make it. Um, and <laughs> the, the argument that I see a lot is that if you lean in into, into not capturing your users, if your business is not harvesting their data and forcing them to stay there, or else, like Facebook does, then how in the hell am I going to be able to monetize? How am I going to be defend? Where's my moat, bro? Um, I, I, to, me, to me, that's a, a little bit of, of thinking based on fear, based on, it, it's sort of like if you think of a, of a relationship, if I don't force my spouse to stay with me, he's just going to run off with the first guy that comes by. I mean, have some respect, man. <laughs> like, you can build something that is valuable enough that the people want to stay with you. They are not forced to stay with you. When you go to buy a tomato, you're not forced to buy a subscription for tomatoes for the next 12 months. You buy a tomato, the tomato's good, you go back the next day. It's, it's, it's just the same way. Um, so, I, I think... The, um, the idea that you can choose change wallets because you have your 12 words and your output script or, or you have your NSEC and you can just go to another client so you will never be able to defend your mode. Um, that is overplaying how much people are willing and looking for change. Uh, People, like, we see a lot of products that just have enough momentum and the, although the product kind of sucks, People stay there because it's familiar. It's what they know. They're already familiar with where is the button. Like, they, they don't want to think so much. So the pain to abandon a product that people are used to and that they kind of like is quite high. 
So you can build a very defensible business, and it aligns your incentives with, um, with the incentives of the user. Because they do have, if you abuse them enough, if you hurt them enough, they will leave. Do you really want to build a business that is based on abusing, uh, not abusing your users enough? Just if you provide enough value, they will stay. Um, so again, I, I think this comes out of fear, uh, just have self-confidence, and, and you can build profitable businesses that are value aligned with your users. Thank you. We have some time for questions, if, uh, if anyone has any questions. All right, Cody. Uh, which profitable businesses do you have right now on Noster? And in terms of monetization, like when did you switch over and what was the fall off from users? Or... So I'm happy to announce that I just received a 10,000 SAP. Uh, just now, so it's the first profitable business on now. So, the, the the economy on Nostr is so freaking small that there will be no profitable business for it, for the foreseeable future. It, it's just the nature of starting something new. Um, so, obviously, there there is none. I have none. There there is none. I mean, if you include uh, developer time, which I think you should, when because. <laughs> Sack yesterday told me, or yeah, I think it was Sack yesterday told me, oh, well, uh, I mean, it's already paying for, no, it was, um, well, someone told me, uh, it's already paying for hosting. So, like, the subs that I received, yeah, I mean, okay. Um, so, yeah, there, currently, there, obviously, there is nothing, uh, but we, we need to see that we are comparing uh, Nostr with, in the current state, obviously, in its infancy, with networks that are well, well, well established and capitalized. And we also need to understand that we, when we compare the future of these open networks, we, are not, we shouldn't compare them with the current status quo of fiat, of Twitter, of platforms. We need to compare them with where are they going? Fiat is dying. So when we think, where is Bitcoin going to be in five years? We don't compare with the fiat of today. We compare with the fiat of five years ahead. Fiat in five years will be quite different to fiat today. Facebook and Twitter in five years will be very different to the, to the fiat, to the, um, to the platforms of today. So long, long answer, none. <laughs> All right. OK, thank you, guys. Thank you.